First of all, I want to thank Larry for organizing and leading this meeting, and thank you as well. To have this discussed at the National Academy of Science is a, is a high honor for all of us at this table and in the room. Um, Pace and Navigation began, had, a, had a, a rather humble beginning in a, in a small community of poor black people, uh, and we looked at the problem they were having, and we came up with the concept of Pace and Navigation. One of the things that I personally had to struggle with during that early time was that I'm trained as a surgeon. I'm a surgeon by training. That's what I trained for many years to be, and that's what I was doing. <clears throat> but the patients that I was facing had problems that I could not solve as a surgeon because we couldn't, as I said yesterday, we could not cut cancer out of Harlem. It was deeply ingrained in the social fabric of Harlem, the problems. And so the first challenge I had was to continue to, to be a specialist, a surgeon in this case, and to try to spread my understanding to a broader area of concern. And I believe that's true for all of us in the room. We're all specialists of some kind. We're doctors, we're nurses, um, we're social workers. And some of us are not specialists, but even people living in communities a specialist of some kind. So I think the first challenge is to, to, to understand the silo that we're living in and working in and being paid for, and at the same time spreading your concern across a broader spectrum. To me, that's a challenge. So now we have nurses, we have doctors. I noticed that in Pennsylvania there's a medical school that um, is training medical students to be patient navigators. I think that's a wonderful thing. I went to speak there two years ago. So I think that the thing we need to get back to is to ask the question of what does the patient need as the first question. What does the patient need? Which is different from what I do much different from what I do. I continue to do what I do as a surgeon, and you do what you do, but then the questions about what does a patient need, that's a different set of questions. And secondly, if the concern is health equity and disparities, which it started out to be, and I think it still is, as Tracy, you said, um, then the question is what that we need to do for the patient to get across the healthcare continuum to some point of resolution, which is a different question from how am I trained, a different question. So I think we have to work that out. We have to struggle with that because we're, we're into categories of training and departments, and we have to satisfy those things to survive. But the thing that we've undertaken to try to solve is a broader set of issues. The broad issue is the patient has to move from the community where all of them live, and all of us live too, into the healthcare system for a particular set of tests, and if there's a finding to the point of diagnosis and through treatment, that, that's, the, that's the question. So the question then to me is, if there's some people in the country, and there are, who have barriers to getting through that system, then what do we need to do as patient navigators? And uh, I think the answers then are different from what do I do as a surgeon or what do I do as a nurse uh, or a social worker or anything else. And so I, I think that to, to get to this in the right way, we have to struggle to fit the categories of health care in which we are providers to the needs of the patient and patient navigation. So we're talking about a change in the paradigm of healthcare. This, this, is, a, this is a paradigm change. So we're, we're not acting then in navigation as, as, as specialists in a silo. We're trying to act across a, an entire continuum from a point of being in a community 
entering a healthcare system, having barriers, and helping people through to an endpoint. And so I think that I'll, I'll leave my remarks, but there's much more to say. Uh, if, the, if the issue is resolution, um, and resolution is, I think, is the issue. Somebody has a problem that we've got to resolve it in a timely way. And, and as, the, as the guest speaker said, uh, um, resolution is the issue. And business people seem to understand how to open and close because they don't get paid until they close. And um, people who create apps uh, for traveling, like in my car, I don't know where I'm going a lot of times. And so, so I put it in an app and they, they direct me. And, and, and the way system even directs you to avoid the traps. I have that on my car. I'm just trying to learn how to use that thing, but, but, <laughs> but, 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 but it does. It says where the policemen are, where the, where, where the accidents. Are. I mean, to, so we we have to kind of think like that, and that's a different set of questions for what navigation is. And so I'll, I'll just end by saying um, that we've had a terrific dialogue. Um, I respect everybody's um, point of view. Um, that has been expressed here in such a beautiful way. But, but I, I think we have a little more to do because I'm not sure that we've asked ourselves the right questions. Now, Einstein said, said this, and I wrote it down, not everything that counts can be counted. There's a lot of things that have to be done that we can't count. And yet we're in accounting, science is a counting thing. And, and, and so there's a little problem here, but some of the things that need to be done that are good, that are good can't be counted. He also said that not, not everything that can be counted counts. It's a different statement. So, so we have to be sure of what, are we counting the right, are we counting the things that really counts? We might be counting a lot of things that look good scientifically, but maybe they're not the right thing that counts to do patient navigation. So I'll stop my comments there, and, and thank you for inviting me to this, uh, to this meeting. Thank you.